What up guys, it's Grumpjeff here with another Raid Shadow Legends video, and this is the episode 3 of a 3 part series on the Masteries, super basic beginner introduction to Masteries in general. Today we are looking at the support tree. Um, if you are advanced in the game and know a lot about the game, there might be some helpful hints in here, but for the most part this is aimed at beginners to the game. So we'll go ahead and start with the first two. Um, so. Much like the defensive one, these first two are kind of going to be aimed mostly at where you need to go with your mastery. So they're kind of just, they're not overall great. Plus 810 HP is not fantastic. Um, it's not terrible. It's definitely something you can use, but in the long run, 808 HP isn't enough to keep you alive or anything else. Um, in my mind, on the other hand, you have the pinpoint accuracy. Plus 10 accuracy is actually really nice. Um, it can get you to that next tier, that next um, dungeon level, actually. Plus 10 accuracy usually takes your accuracy to the next dungeon level. If you go by the dungeon level times 10 to equal the accuracy you need on that dungeon level. So this is plus one dungeon level. Kind of a nice little thing in the background. Um, I pin, uh, pick pinpoint accuracy a lot. Um, if I have to pick between the two just to get something, or if it's a toss-up, that would be the one I'd go with. That leads us directly into... Tier 2, Charged Focus. This increases accuracy by 20 when the champion has no skills on cooldown. Um, this is a great thing for like your uh, debuff champ, your main debuff, or your defense down champ, your uh, decreased attack champ, um, anyone like that, because when you start that round, especially in the arena or something like that, an extra 20 accuracy to get that thing to hit, that's huge. Because you're not going to have anything on cooldown. Unless you got hit with someone's skill who has on cooldown, and odds are in the arena you probably already lost. Um, but this is going to help you get that defense, the decreased defense out, decrease attack out, weaken, whatever. Land those poisons. Solid, solid, solid move. All right. Go across the board. Then we have Exalt in Death. This heals the champion by 10% of their max HP the first time an enemy is killed each round. Um, this one's nice because the first time an enemy is killed in each round, they don't have to kill it. Just an enemy is killed. They just like that an enemy is killed, so they get, boom, 10% health. Um, the only problem, not problem with it, but, like, the the quirk is, like, if you're doing an arena team and it goes first, you're going to get that 10% max HP when you slay somebody and rounds over. So it's not really giving you any benefit. There's no bang for your buck in it because you don't need the HP. Um, so you're kind of missing out on what could have been accuracy or what could have been in the next uh, thing over here, which would be the shield bearer. So those are the two things you're missing out if you have a go-first team. If you're doing a, a slugfest, you know, tier by tier, Doom Tower, something like that, so you go into the next tier or the next tier of a dungeon, that health is really going to help. So just kind of know what you're using, know what you need that champion to do. do you, you know, are they an attack type champion that needs some accuracy for some reason or needs a little help, then there you go. But for support tree, you don't send too many attack champions down it. Um, there's always some exceptions, you know, like extend buffs, uh, debuff spreaders. Um, you know, you got Zavia with her poisons and whatnot, so there's always someone out there. Anyway, Shield Bearer increases the value of shield buffs by this champion cast by 5%. So this is great for your miscreated monsters, um, your Valks. You can do it with, uh, you know, anyone you just want to kind of give that extra little oomph to their shield. Anyone who's popping one out there, uh, what is it, Vergus? Any, anyone like that. Even Scrapper can benefit from this. So a lot of champions out there. Again, it's just a 5% on top of that shield. So nice little additive for a, a Tier 2. And then we have the Lay on Hands. Increases the value of heals this champion cast by 5%. Pretty straightforward. Great for all your healers, you know, Apothecaries, your uh, Silva Drakes. Too many healers really to think of. There's so many out there. Aox, all, all kinds of different champions can use this here. Um, and it's casts, so it's not like lifesteal or anything like that. So don't think it's going to tear that one up any at all. So, But a little extra 5%, definitely going to help you a long way. All right, we'll just continue down that tree. After you do that first one, a lot of people will then follow it up immediately with Healing Savior. Um, increases the amount of healing and the value of shield buffs placed by this champion by 10%. If the target ally has 40% HP or less. So when it matters most, you get that little bump. So that's really kind of what this one's all about. I mean, it's going to give you that extra 10% on top of the extra 5%, which is kind of fight to keep that champion alive. So that heal is going to be even stronger when it matters. Same with that shield. That shield will be even stronger 
when it matters. Um, at the same time, you'd like your champions not to get to this point, but hey, it's a, a big, big move that's actually saved quite a few of my teams in the early to mid stages of the game. Um, so we'll keep moving on to tier three, rapid response has a 30% chance of increasing the turn meter by 10% when a buff cast by this champion is removed or expired. This is actually a really, really cool thing to do if you don't have a speed tuned team. If you got a straight up speed tuned team, just stay away. Um, Cause this thing will wreck your team. Unless they cast absolutely no buffs and you're just using it to scoot over one side or another, um, just, don't touch it. But if you're just looking for a team to move faster and you want your, you know, uh, buffer to go quicker, it's a nice little thing to add on there. They're going to speed them up, get those buffs out a little bit more, um, especially because, you know, a lot of cooldowns are three, three turns and their buffs last usually two turns. So it's going to help you get back there and close that gap a little bit. Um, so that's really what that's kind of built for. Anyway, let's move on to the next. Uh, Swarm Smiter. Increases accuracy by 4 for each enemy alive, stacks up to 16. So like Spider, you get an extra 16 accuracy. Again, if you're going down the accuracy tree for this because you need that extra accuracy and you don't have the gear for it, this is really great. Because worst case scenario, you're getting 4. 4 extra accuracy, which isn't that great. But it's only on the bosses that you're getting that 4. I mean, you'd go Spiderlings, you're getting 16. You know, at, as they wane and fall, you're getting 16 accuracy when you're going, which is really going to help you land those debuffs land those HP burns, land those stuns, whatever you're trying to do, control that boss and get that damage in. So, nice solid little extra, little top up. It does fluctuate, just remember that. Arcane Celerity, we have a 30% chance of increasing the turn meter by 10% when a debuff cast by this champion is removed or expired. So this is the exact same thing as this one over here, the rapid response, just for debuffs, not for buffs. So if you're looking to get that debuffer to go a little bit quicker and put that defense down, put that weaken, put that decrease attack, and you don't have a speed tune team, this is perfect. You can speed tune with both these. I don't want to say you can't. It's just a lot more difficult because you have to counter in that 10%. So you have to build the speeds differently. So just know they can be speed tuned. Debuff is even harder to speed down. I'm going to put that out there as well because there's a 3% chance you miss no matter how good your accuracy is. So if you miss that and it's speed tuned and you have to hit your debuff every time, it can throw the whole thing off on a long like clan boss battle. So just know that buffers easier to take into account the 10%. So not bad. We drop down to tier four. We have evil eye. Decreases the target's turn meter when this champion hits them with the default skill, their A1, for the first time. Decreases the turn meter by 20% with single target skills and 5% with AoE skills. Occurs once per target. Um, this is an amazing skill to have out there, especially in Arena with a go-first team or anyone who has, you know, uh, retaliation or anything like that so they go after they get hit. Um... It's nice to kind of steal that turn meter away. Turn meter control is the name of the game right now, a lot of the game. So to take a teeny bit off with your AOE guys or take a massive amount off with your single target champions can be a game changer. Big time game changer. Um, I know with Spider it helps out a ton on that first wave. If you're waiting to kind of hold back on your cold heart or hold back on whatever your turn control champion is or you don't have enough turn control, you can give all of your champions this skill. Kind of get that first round under control. Anyways, solid, solid move. Um, I use it probably 10% of the time, maybe 20% of the time I go down the support tree, just because I'm usually looking for accuracy when I go support. All right. Then we have a Lore of Steel. I feel like this had a sentence structure change, but maybe I just misread it earlier. I, anyways, increases the base stat set bonuses of all artifact sets that increase base stats by 15%. This increases multiplicative not additive, which means it's a very small amount. So basically what you're talking about with that, we're gonna pop out of here. We'll go ahead and look at our artifacts. Um, so 15%, yeah, life set, offense set, defense set, not speed, not crit rate, not crit damage, not accuracy, not resist, not blah, 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 on and on it goes. So it, it, it's, It used to be something special. 
I feel like that 15% wasn't always there and that might have been a change. I could be wrong, leave a comment below if I am wrong, that's fine. Um, but that really kind of makes the lore steel not that great. Unless you have those sets going. So, anyways, it used to be a lot better in my mind, but I may have just been ignoring that and blotting it out. But if you are using those basic sets and you have a champion that you're just like, that's the gear they're in and you're not going to move it, yeah, it'll help you out. Give you that little extra something to hit with. Not a bad deal. All right, moving on to Cycle of Magic. 5% chance of decreasing the cooldown of a random skill by one turn at the start of every turn. Um, can be great. Can be amazing. Great thing to have on your damage dealers in a speed tune team, usually because your damage dealers don't have moves that have to be cast at certain times. Um, usually it's your debuffers and your buffers that need stuff done, especially in clan boss. Like, this can really screw up. Like, if you need, uh, let's just say, Sifi, and you need her to catch her block debuffs, and she hits this one, and all of a sudden it's going one turn early, so now the stuns pop in your team. Well, whoopsie-daisy. Not a very good thing to do. So you just make sure that you're putting it on the right people or you're not putting it into a speed tune team. And this will give you that skill just a little bit sooner, 5% of the time, which can be a huge game changer for a lot of champions. Um, I know I have it on my uh, my Martyr, and it ends up helping out quite a bit to get that uh, counterattack up a little bit more often and be able to put that decrease attack down a little bit more often. All right. We got Merciful Aid, increases the amount of healing and value of shield buffs placed by this champion by 15% if the target ally has Stun, Sleep, Fear, True Fear, or Freeze debuffs. This one is super niche. It's a huge bump, 15%, huge bump. But you already have to be smacked pretty hard and stunned out. So this would be great for you know a champion that's a resist champion or um, anyone who's going to take the shot um, and survive the debuffs and actually get debuffs so they can actually put this down on other champions. So if you're having a hard time, um, I know some, what am I thinking of, faction war bosses, they cast that fear all the time and it's really, really hard to get past those stage 21s. It's not a bad thing to have on your healer. Just make sure to put enough resistance so they're not feared out as well. Because um, then you can land some serious shields and some heals on them. Uh, Raglan is perfect for this because she clears all that stuff away and gives a massive bump. All right, down to tier five, we have Lasting Gifts. 30% chance to extend the duration of any buffs cast by this champion by one. Love this one. Will not extend, block damage, unkillable, and revive on death buffs. Big, big thing. Big thing to pay attention to. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, if this extended these, this would be an insane gift. This is going to basically keep your counterattacks up. Your shield's going to last longer. Um, I use it on one of my Valkyries to keep her shield going for three turns a lot of the time. And 30% chance, so... Um, it's just a solid, solid skill. Really great to pair with anyone who puts block debuffs on. Because I think... I don't think there's a single block debuff champion out there who has a two-turn cooldown on it. Um, most of them have three turns, which means you need that one-turn extension if you can get it. If you don't have anyone who extends buffs anyways. Awesome, awesome, awesome talent to have. Awesome mastery to put on those champions. Going one over, Spirit Haste. Increases speed by 8 for each dead ally. Stacks up to 24%. It's a pretty cool arena arena move. Because it's going to get you going faster. It's great to have on a Reviver. Basically, you're cycling your skills faster when you don't have as big of a team. So you get an extra 24 speed if your team gets wiped. Um, maybe like on a Cardinal, where you want your team to get wiped. This will pop you up a little bit quicker. Um, other than that, again, I, see, I know it's a broken record, but do not put it on speed tune teams. Um, even if you have a reviver, it can screw things up, but it doesn't screw it up that bad, but still, you can really, really get things misaligned, and then your team's just going to wipe two turns later. All right, moving on. Sniper increases the chance of placing any debuff from skills or artifacts by five so this is artifacts included the problem is it misses out on some of the best ones stun sleep freeze fear true fear and provoke are not affected by this talent so it's not going to help out your stun sets it's not going to help out your any provoke sets you know, your fury or whatever it is um but it is nice to have this you know especially for those champions that have like 75 percent or 80 percent um, success rate that extra five percent success rate for like decreased defense decreased attack it's a nice little thing to add on there 
Um, and then Sniper is often paired with, are paired with our next one, which is Master Hexer. 30% um, chance to extend the duration of any debuff cast by this champion by one turn. This is what you want for your three turn cooldown defense champions, defense down champions. Um, it will not extend stun, sleep, fear, provoke, uh, <laughs> true fear, freeze, or bomb. Thankful on the bomb one. That would be crazy if you kept extending your bomb timer so it didn't detonate. Um, but yeah, it's just like I was saying with the buffs, it can keep those you know, defense down, that decreased attack down uh, longer so your team can survive longer with a decreased attack, or you can do more damage with the decreased defense. You can extend those poisons so you get that extra poison tick, or, you know, if you have a Xavier or someone who blows up poisons so you get that extra blow up. Um, there's a lot of advantage to this, you know, kind of just gets rid of that cooldown period sometimes, which really, really, really helps. So a nice little move there. And that one is right above Eagle Eye which is just a plus 50. Um, this is rarely used. I mean, usually by the time you get a really nice team together, you don't need the plus 50 accuracy. Um, early to mid game, this is actually kind of nice. Remember, you do get one free reset of all your masteries. So if you're early to mid game and you are struggling getting accuracy on your guys and you don't want to you know, waste HP or defense so they survive, go ahead and pop this one on there. You know, in your first go through setting them up. Get this on there, knowing that you're going to change it out once you have the gear that can cover the 50 accuracy buff. That is a fantastic use of Eagle Eye. Um, other people still use it in the advanced game if you're going like super high tier arena where you need like four or 500 accuracy, all that kind of craziness. Um, other than that, maybe high level Doom Tower. But like I said, it's a great thing to do on your first go around for your debuffers when you know you have that free reset. After that, it's going to cost you, what, 150 gems, I think? So just keep that in mind. The next one over is the Presser. Increases turn meter fill rate by 2.5% for each active debuff cast by this champion. Stacks up to 10%. You see this in the arena sometimes. Um, I don't see it that much. I've never personally used it. Um, I mean, I've seen it used to great effect, but it's a whole team speed tuned it's it's a lot to make it work really really well um, but again if you're just wanting your team to go faster and you want your debuffer to get rid of that gap between that uh you know two turn cycle and the three turn cooldown on the skill this is gonna help so definitely can speed up a champ quite a bit then we got our timely intervention this one's a lot you see on Speed leads or uh, arbiters have a lot of this, and it increases the champion's turn meter by 20% whenever an ally hero drops below 25% HP. So basically, if you're in a team that's just getting beat up, it's a go second team or anything like that, this will help you cut in line. Um, so basically, their entire team doesn't go, you cut in line, you bring your team back to life, or you speed them up, or basically you can uh, really turn the tide with this one. So if you're looking for a speed lead who needs to cut, you know, you're having a hard time getting in front of the team that you're fighting, or you're having a hard time, you know, getting that second turn out to finish them off, this will help you. So, really, really solid thing. Definitely going to help out. And this last one, Elixir of Life. Just wait for gear, guys. 3,000 max HP. Wait for gear. Just farm gear to get that 3,000 HP. Very, very low usage on this. Um... I really don't know why it was on there. If it was 10,000, that would be cool. But 3,000 is just like, why? Just why? It's a huge waste compared to all the other stuff you can get on the bottom tiers of all the other trees. So this one gives a huge thumbs down. And uh, that is it for the support tree. Thank you so much for watching this three-part series. I hope you guys have uh, learned a little bit on how to use this and where to use them and why. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I will try my best to get back to these videos um, every couple of days just to see if there's anything new I need to help out with. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe and hit that bell. Hit that thumbs up. I appreciate you all and have yourself a wonderful day.